Ahoy there, YouTubers and plant lovers. It's Justin coming to you from the Big Blue Nation once again. And today, I was going to talk to you about Adenium obesum, or Desert Rose. This plant is actually not even a rose at all. This plant is a succulent. And you can tell by its cadex, or its trunk, it gets uh, pretty big and fat, and it uses it to store a lot of water. So if you're ever out looking for one, you're going to kind of find one that is kind of bigger, kind of maybe tapered on the top, like it's fatter on the bottom. Uh, this is a good indication of health. So you want to find one, like I said, that is a little bit on the bigger side. A scrawnier one is probably indicative that it doesn't have a lot of moisture or that generally something's wrong with it. Now these plants are native to Sub-Saharan Africa, more on the east side, and the Arabian Peninsula. So they are from a tropical area, and they do light a lot of light. I'm talking about anywhere from six to eight hours of light a day is gonna be ideal for these plants. Um, so you can't really get away with setting this plant on a windowsill and hoping that it's gonna be okay. You can probably do that in the wintertime, but in the spring and summertime, this plant needs to be out in direct sun. Now, if it's been inside for a while, you're going to want to introduce it back into the sunlight slowly. If not, you can burn the leaves and you can lose them. This plant is deciduous, so it can lose its leaves in the, in the winter time. And that's nothing to fear because it will regrow them. Now, this plant is a member of the dogbane family. Kind of similar to the Madagascar palm, uh, oleander, periwinkle, and milkweed. Uh, these plants will produce a sap that can be kind of toxic. So if you're ever fiddling around with one of these, you want to either wear gloves or wash your hands immediately after, especially if you come into contact with any of the actual sap. Um, mostly it's going to be a mild irritant. It can like hurt your eyes, make them really uh, itchy and watery. Other than that, it can be toxic to dogs, cats, and horses. So I really wouldn't have the plant even if you had kids. Uh, now I've got a dog and two cats and I've had these plants outside and inside with my indoor cats and my outdoor cats and I haven't had a problem yet. But why tempt fate? Uh, you just want to be careful whenever handling this. And as I was saying, this plant uh, is a succulent so it uh, doesn't need a whole bunch of water. Um, it will store a lot of its water in its cadex or its trunk, so you really don't need to give it a lot of water. I'd say in the hottest part of the year, maybe once a week will suffice. If you feel like it needs more water, you can kind of check the top of the soil. And if the top whole inch is dry, you could probably go ahead and give it a little bit of water. Now, it doesn't only just store water in its cadex, but it also stores water in its robust roots and a tiny little bit in the leaves. So uh, this plant can be pretty forgiving if you've uh, left it alone for a while. Uh, light, as I was saying, it needs anywhere from six to eight hours of sunlight a day and only kind of gradually introduce it if it's been sitting inside for a while. Uh, this is a succulent, so you'll want to remember that these plants do thrive on neglect. So uh, if you've just repotted it, I wouldn't give it any feedings for about six months because a lot of these uh, soils that you get are gonna have a good amount of food in there for the plant. And then if you feed on top of it, you're just gonna burn the plant out. Um, repotting only needs to be done whenever it's done flowering. Now you'll know the flowers because they're anywhere from, uh, they can be any kind of color really. Now this one in the little turtle pot uh, it's supposed to have a darker colored flower, almost kind of black. But I've seen the flowers come in whites, pinks, reds, and I believe that's about it. I mean, they're able to do some genetic modifying, and like I said, this one is supposed to have kind of a darker color. It's not going to be full on black, but uh, whenever it does bloom, I will post that on here to let you all know. But I do love this plant. It's very popular with the Bonsai Society because it does look like a tree. The cadex or stem gets to be rather woody looking and it does have these beautiful leaves and then it gets really beautiful flowers whenever it actually flowers. And you really don't have to do much for the flowering. This plant can flower just about any other time of the year as long as a few of the conditions are met. As long as it's got its light, its water, and the humidity doesn't really need to even have any. I never miss these plants, so they are fine without having a whole lot of humidity. 
but they do like warm. So make sure this plant doesn't get below 60 degrees. Now I'm getting ready to go into my winter time. So I'm going to bring these plants inside and make sure that they're sitting by a uh, good window that produces a, a good amount of light. Their light is gonna be dra uh, drastically reduced. Um, and because of that, it probably will lose a couple of leaves. Now, uh, that's nothing to fear because it is deciduous. They can regrow the leaves, but just be prepared for that. And like I said, the leaves can be toxic. So if they do, you want to pick them up as soon as possible. And uh, other than that, uh, that's really all I have to say. Uh, pests are another thing that these plants kind of struggle with, like any other. Uh, aphids are really bad with these. Spider mites and mealybugs. So whenever you go to water them, I always give my plants a one over and kind of look under the leaves and on the stems. And if you see anything, the best thing to do is to take a washcloth and douse some alcohol on it and kind of rub underneath the leaves and on the stems. And that should uh, get rid of a lot of stuff. If it's not able to get rid of everything, then I would take the plant outside and fully hose it down with the water hose to kind of knock the rest of the stuff off. And then, if you still have any pests on here, I would go ahead and use a gentle, now I say gentle, but I'm just gonna say use a conservative amount of any kind of uh, pesticide or fungicide, and that will help you out. Well guys, that's really all I have to say about a Denium obesum or the Desert Rose. So, if you don't mind, I would suggest that you go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know if you've all had any kind of success or failures with this plant. And uh, while you're at it, be sure to hit the like button. And don't forget, if you haven't, hit the subscribe button so that you'll know anytime that I'm going to upload a new video. Well guys, I hope you all have a good one. Take it easy. And don't forget, always plant prudently. Later YouTube. Alright guys, if you want to see last week's video, be sure and click over here. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, you can always click over here as well. Alright guys, take it easy.